Hey guys, Shane here, Gabriel Plant. I'm actually inside of our packing facility today and wanted to go over some propagation one-on-one -on -one with you and maybe your kids who are home with you this weekend. As I said in a previous video, I think a lot of you guys do have family at home right now. So trying to make some helpful information to maybe uh, spur some love for plants uh, in your family. And I know a lot of you guys have plants at home. So we're gonna go over basic propagation. Now, one thing to note from the start, uh, what we're gonna be doing today is planting into soil. That's what we do here at Gabriella Plants in the greenhouse. We fill pots and we propagate directly into soil. So what we're gonna be working on today are some micans in three inch. I know some of you guys do prefer water propagation. So although it's not something we do here, um, that is completely valid and is a very cool thing to do with your family. The reason we don't do water propagation here at Gabriella Plants quite simply is because we do sell plants in soil. We think that that's the best way to make sure that they're going to have the safest ride they could from our greenhouse to your house. Um, so for us, if we're, we know the eventuality is to grow in soil medium and is to ship in soil medium, we don't ship bare root. Um, it's kind of duplicating the process um, for something that really doesn't need to be duplicated uh, if we would have to water propagate and then repot into soil. So again, we go straight into uh, soil here. Now in the greenhouses, I probably won't be able to put this into this video, but know that in our smallest greenhouse, we actually have a series of benches that are on an automated, automated watering system uh, that will go ahead and disperse 10 seconds of water every 10 minutes. Now, that may seem a little overboard, but when the greenhouses are 100 degrees plus, it gets pretty difficult to keep the tops of the soil moist. You're gonna dry out this top bit of soil which is all the cutting really has to go on in uh, multiple times a day if you weren't keeping them otherwise moist. Now, some plants like Hoyas do like uh, even the process of rooting into soil. They prefer for their soil to be on the drier side. So we do have different benches uh, that get different systematic watering depending on their needs. But for the most part, any of what we call our bread and butter or the standard pothos philodendron stuff, uh, that all likes not overly wet, you don't want to compact the soil, but they definitely do like moist soil as they're rooting in. So let's go ahead real quick and grab some cuttings and then we'll come back to how to stick them directly into soil. All right guys, so here we have an eight inch micin basket. Um, we don't sell plants this big normally, uh, but I did want to go over how we would normally trim them. So. Uh, trimming does two things. One, it allows us to have the ability to propagate more and make more plants, but also regular trimming is also going to help uh, make your plant fuller, especially plants that tend to want to vine out and don't normally produce what we in the nursery business call full heads on top. So uh, real quick, these are my preferred uh, pruning shears. You can find the Amazon link in the description. They're just what I like. Um, they're technically labeled, I think, bonsai shears. Uh, but I like them mainly because they have a smaller blade than a lot of different ones on the market. So I just find myself uh, having less things that accidentally get trimmed. Um, but that being said, so what we're going to do is we're going to look for long, healthy stems. We're going to try to cut them back as far as we can without causing damage to the plant. So as you see the stem, let me grab this one out here. There are several uh, different nodes here um, with roots at them. Really anywhere along this would be safe to cut. For the sake of wanting it to be full, you may not want to trim at the edge of the pot. You're going to want to try to trim in the center of the pot to keep that pot as full as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it right here, which is probably hard to see, but that's going to leave it right where my finger is. And in the full context of the plant, um, it will help it to um, flush out and of course we could do this to the whole plant. Um, there's obviously some really long ones here. Um, I'll do one more just in case. Uh, let's go ahead. See this is, and in general for me per personally, if it has less than two uh, viable rooted uh, nodes within the cutting, I don't take it quite yet. I try to go for ones that have four or more unless I really need that cutting. But I'm going to go ahead and just trim this up. 
If possible, of course, for beauty's sake, I do try to trim on the other side of the pot just so that when it does flush back out, you get the most uh, fullness and you're kind of hiding uh, the stems of where you had pre previously trimmed them. Obviously, I'll have to go back and trim off some dead leaves. This is probably about the same time that I would reapply fertilizer to this too. We're gonna go ahead and get started on our actual propagation. So of course, as I mentioned with water propagation, we could very easily take a cutting, uh, especially with tip cutting specifically, you have a tiny, tiny little piece uh, that is gonna look good right there. And given it's long enough stem, we could go ahead and take our water vial and push it through. Or if you had one without the safety lid, that would also work. That right there is your water propagation. So now that we have our cuttings, let's go ahead and dive into some propagation. So sometimes when they get into being a lot of different directions, it can be helpful to go ahead and pre-trim uh, so that you have a more easy to stick down uh, version. Additionally, if you have really, really long spaces between uh, your different points that you're trying to propagate, it's not a bad thing to trim off some of that excess, especially if you're gonna put it into a pot that's rather shallow, um, but don't do it unless you have to based on your soil depth. Um, the extra bit of stem there can help the plant if you're able to, but let's go ahead and really quickly do this the way we do at Gabriella. So we're gonna go ahead and take this node, we're gonna go ahead and stick it down just so that it, I uh, need to trim off just a tiny bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and trim it down here just so we're bearing those uh, tiny roots there, those aerial roots are forming roots right here. We're gonna do the same thing, trim this guy off and stick this guy in. Another one, I am using my pruners gently, not cutting, I'm not squeezing on the pruners, but I am using it to help stabilize uh, each cutting as I'm pushing it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. Probably have a little bit too much length here. And this is cutting number four, beautiful. And then cutting number five, last one, get that pushed down into the soil. Now it is okay if a tiny bit of those roots stay above the soil. In fact, that's kind of healthy for the plant. Uh, that will help ensure that the plant is getting both oxygen and moisture as it begins to root in. Another thing you'll see if you ever see us post photos of propagation that happened recently in the greenhouse is you'll typically see them all laying down the same direction and that's intentional because when you have them in trays like this, if we're able to have them laying the, the same facing direction, you're gonna get a lot better water coverage uh, when you do go to keep these moist in the coming time. Now, real quick while I have you guys, that really does kind of wrap up the basics of how we propagate things at Gabriella. There are a handful of exceptions that we don't do this way. Some of the larger leaf philodendrons like Pink Princess, Silver Sword, Jose's, uh, depending on the cutting, we may do two additional steps. One, we may allow the cutting to dry out somewhat, just so that the uh, point, the bottom of the stem from where you cut it, is able to kind of harden, uh, form a scab, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, that can really help to lock in some of the remaining moisture and nutrients that the plant has in that stem. The pothos and vining philodendron families in general don't really have that problem. The other thing we'll sometimes do, especially on items that aren't traditionally, I wouldn't say traditionally, but aren't typically done via propagation, like ficuses, um, a lot of that is produced like tanniki, a lot of those different plants are produced primarily from tissue culture. Uh, I do have an example of tissue culture right here. When we talk about TC, uh, this is what we mean. They come in a baby plant form. Those that I would classify as harder to root, um, I would say we do this on silver sword, even though they're not particularly challenging, but the thing that is popping into my mind right now is actually ficus triangularis, even the green version. On things like that, we will use a rooting hormone. Now, this is something we get in bulk form. Uh, it's all the same. Uh, acid. I'm not an expert on how this stuff works, but it does come in a powdered form. I'm going to go ahead and stick a cutting uh, of mycin with rooting hormone, but just know again that we don't normally use this on mycins, but 
The important thing is that unless you're using a rooting gel, which is something we don't use, we use a rooting hormone that's in a powder form, you're gonna need to get your cutting wet or the surface area in which you want to apply the rooting hormone, you're gonna need to get that wet first. So I actually just have some water right here. Um, so I'm gonna actually dunk the entire portion of the cutting that I am gonna stick into the soil into that. And then using uh, this dust that is now on the lid, I'm just gonna kind of gently roll it in that. It is also okay to kind of tap off the excess. Water first, then get your rooting hormone. And then just like normal, we would still stick it into soil the same way. So do that one more time. Alrighty guys, so that is the extra tidbit on rooting hormone and in general how we propagate here at Gabriella Plants. Like I said, we've been working a lot more on these three inch ones. I hope this video was fun for you guys and educational. If you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. And I hope to continue to do more of these videos as we move forward over the next couple weeks. So if there's a topic you think you'd like to see me or the staff here address, feel free to put it in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you guys soon.